Hey gang. So we're still uh, playing away here with 1806 and we are now at the end of the first day. So we started the, the game on the 10th of October and we played the morning turn, the afternoon and evening turn and we just did the night turn. And the night turn is pretty much where you resolve uh, in the early stages of the battle in any case. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of reorganization of units, you're just resolving supply and uh, uh, allocating folks to uh, road march, uh, which is uh, slightly different than regular road march. It actually, I think it has a different name, but we're going to call it road march for now because I'm, I'm not going to pull the rules out to look. What I did want to point out and highlight is that in this particular game or this particular system, uh, there are a couple of different elements in the game that don't really have enormously negative effects from what I can tell. So. The concept of being out of supply or being demoralized to me would be disastrous, I would think, particularly if you were fighting in a regiment in a Napoleonic brigade and uh, you ran out of ammo or whatever the case may be, or victuals, whatever, whatever the food. Uh, I remember reading a, a very uh, interesting uh, report on the logistics that were re required for the Peninsula campaign that Wellington had to organize and the thousands of carts that had to be uh, arranged and donkeys that were needed to pull the carts and uh, how much food the donkeys needed and how much how many horses how much the horses ate for the cavalry and the artillery and the men and the wine and the bread and it's an amazing amount of volume of food and, and let's just call it victuals and ammo and things like that so with all that in my mind i'm playing this game and i thought well oh no i've started it wrong and i've done it wrong and i'm my guys are too spread out and it's a disaster. And I probably am too spread out and it probably is going to be a disaster. But the cool thing is uh, being out of supply is not necessarily that bad of a, a situation. What it does do to you is uh, creates a, uh, a mode uh, called being demoralized. And they have a very cute little counter. And these are all obviously fairly old uh, artwork and things like that. But... Uh, there's this guy here, and he's the uh, demoralized counter. You can see him there. You know, he's kind of sitting down, taking a, taking a reflecting on life. And what does being demoralized do? Well, it adds one to your activation roll, which significant, uh, particularly if you have an activation of, uh, say, three. Uh, some are even have two here, but a lot of these have fours, so... Um, I've got a 66% chance of activating uh, Freant here and a 50% chance of activating these guys here. Uh, so this is going to uh, reduce the ability to do that because I need to roll underneath their rating to activate them. So uh, not a terrible thing necessarily, particularly if I keep my guys around my core commander, uh, around Napoleon, who can activate commands. I'm going to be able to be in fairly good shape. So for instance, in this case, if Murat was a little closer, uh, we could activate his core, uh, DeVoe and Bernadotte's uh, core, and not have any concerns about whether or not we were in or not, in range or not, of the baggage, which is right here. Um, yeah. Uh, doesn't matter how how uh, you get to the fact that you're out of supply. It's not that hard. You're just counting hexes to the baggage train. A uh, baggage train then uh, has to count MPs off the map. Uh, but the Prussians who start uh, in a pretty bad situation because they're all spread out all over the place. Well, they have. They are going to be out of supply unless they elect to move back aggressively, which maybe they, they should have done, and consolidate their forces around uh, Jenna, is over over this way, this is uh, Jenna here, uh, and, and pull back. And maybe that's why they did that. They only have one baggage train. And so they put all these guys out of supply. So I was very concerned, and it ends up that I don't really need to be that concerned because we're going to try and activate those guys next turn, start moving them back if we can. It'll be more difficult to activate them. They can't advance after combat they can still do road march, so I lose no, uh, I lose nothing. I don't think in terms of combat effectiveness 
uh, for these units other than the inability to advance up to combat. So that's perhaps some, that's a nuance that I don't appreciate to this uh, system or to the era. Uh, I was expecting it to be a more significant impact as I, as I was expecting uh, being out of command to be a more significant impact. If you are prepared to roll individual dice for individual units, wherever they may be, and and not roll for the various commanders, uh, you can you can have your guys spread out all over the place if that makes any sense. At the moment, uh, I, I'm now trying to take a step back from the game mechanics and look at what are we, what are we trying to achieve here and what are the goals of the actual operation. Uh, I don't think the game plan I expressed to you early uh, in the game when we first set up has really changed much. I still think we're going to try and sweep north and west to Jenna uh, and, uh, and look for an opportunity down in the south here to, to, to cross rivers, although the Prussians have blown a couple. And the Prussians are going to try and uh, consolidate around Jenna and keep a force uh, somewhere in this region here looking to do a, uh, a strike. Uh, at the supply chain of the French. Uh, seeing how little effect that has, that may uh, that may not be a smart idea. So we'll uh, we'll continue to plug away here and see what happens next. We'll be heading into the 11th of October morning turn in just a moment.